Hello everyone, welcome to Literophile. Today let's take a quick glimpse at a series of miscellaneous multiple choice questions that can be counted as a revision towards the upcoming UGC Net JRF English exam. Let's take a look at the first question. Who put forward the idea of criticism via music through melopoeia? I repeat the question. Who put forward the idea of criticism via music through melopoeia? The options are A. Wynham Lewis Option B. Wallace Stevens Option C. Ezra Pound Option D. Gertrude Stein And the answer to this question is Option C. Ezra Pound Now Ezra Pound distinguishes three different kinds of poetry. One is melopoeia, second phanopoeia and the third one is logopoeia. Melopoeia is when words are charged beyond their normal meaning with some musical property which further directs its meaning. Phanopoeia is casting of images upon visual imagination and logopoeia is poetry that uses words for more than just their direct meaning. That is, it stimulates both visual imagination with phanopoeia and induces emotional correlations with melopoeia. So the answer to this question, who put forward the idea of criticism via music through melopoeia is Ezra Pound. The second question, the collection of poems called Drum Taps by Walt Whitman offers his reflections on Dash. Option A, Transcendentalism. Option B, Romanticism. Option C, Slavery. And Option D, The Civil War. And the answer to this question is Option D, The Civil War. So Drum Taps, it was published in 1865 and it's a collection of poetry that's written by the American poet Walt Whitman. And it was written during the American Civil War. So it offers his reflections on the American Civil War. Let's move on to question three. In the time machine, Morlocks is the name for Dash. In the time machine, Morlocks is the name for Dash. Option A, a machine. Option B, a medicine. Option C, a species. And option D, a place. And the answer to this question is option C, a species. Now, Morlocks are a fictional species that was created by H.G. Wells for his 1895 novel, The Time Machine. And these are considered as the main antagonists of the novel. After thousands of generations of living without sunlight, the Morlocks have dull grey to white skin, chinless faces, large greyish red eyes with a capacity for reflecting light, and flaxen hair on the head and back. So it is the name of a species. It's a fictional species created by the author H.G. Wells for his 1895 novel, The Time Machine. Next, we have the fourth question. The three-act play, Dader of Sorrows, was written by Dash. The three-act play, Dader of Sorrows, was written by Dash. Option A, John Galsworthy. Option B, J.M. Singe. Option C, Lady Gregory. Option D, Sean O'Casey. And the answer to this question is Option B, J.M. Singe. So, Dader of the Sorrows is a three act play written by the Irish playwright John Millington Singe uh, in the year 1909. And now this play is based on Irish mythology and in particular it concerns the myths regarding Dader, Navois and Conchobar. Okay, now this was a play that was left unfinished due to the death of J.M. Singe while he was writing this play and it was later completed by W.B. Yeats. William Butler Yeats is the one who completed this play that was left unfinished by J.M. Singe. Let's take a look at the fifth question. Who of the following used doubly oblique narratives in many of his novels? Option A, H.G. Wells. Option B, Rudyard Kipling. Option C, Joseph Conrad. And option D, William Golding. The answer to this question is option C, Joseph Conrad. In order to further explain this, 
let's take the example of one of uh, conrad's works which is heart of darkness where conrad employs the technique of frame narration that is story within a story though the story begins and ends in roughly the same place and time you find that majority of the actions of the novel take place through a series of flashbacks similarly conrad also uses another technique which is that of a double narrator now one common narrator one uh, repeated narrator that you find in many of his many of conrad's novels is marlo now marlo's story is relayed to us second hand through the transcription of a narrator who is never named so the answer to this question who of the following used doubly oblique narratives in many of his novels is option c joseph conrad with that we come to the end of the session thank you